Hey everyone, welcome to Wagered on Tilt. I am T, and today we are going to be going through correlations. And what correlations are is a relationship between differing stats and data points. Uh, this is a really basic piece of information that everybody needs to know when building betting models or doing any kind of sports model. So when creating a betting model, we need to use data that has a cause and effect type of relationship and impact. We need to find stuff that we believe will have an impact on the outcome we're trying to find. Um, a great way to think of this is to have your data tell a story for you. Um, so first what you want to do is come up with a narrative or a story and then try and find data that you think is going to support your story. One of these could say is that I think that the Ducks are going to score over three goals because this other team has a weaker defense and a weaker goalie and that that will allow them to score at least three goals. Doesn't mean they're going to win. I don't care about them winning. I just think that they're going to score three goals because of a weak defense and a weak goalie. So I will go look for data that supports the theory and then I'll go ahead and then start trying to see well, how well does it correlate to games when they've scored over three goals or scored three goals? Often when people collect the data, they'll just pull down thousands and thousands and thousands of records of data and then try and run analysis on it and then take that information and make a narrative and make their story. You shouldn't build a story off of the data. You should have your story and then find the data that supports the story. Just because there's correlation between pieces of information does not mean that they're completely related to one another and that there is a cause and effect impact. That is a causation. Correlation does not mean causation by any means, but is a good guide to show you that these things may potentially impact each other, but it doesn't mean they do. Um, so when we talk about the correlation, a correlation ranges from a negative one to a positive one, and it can fit anywhere in there. A negative one means that your line is going down, which means that it has a negative impact, which means as one number goes up, the other number moves in the opposite direction. Um, a basic example of this could be as NFL passing yards goes up in a game, NFL rushing yards goes down in the game. Reason being is that they're passing more, scores are going higher faster, so teams need to air it out more often than doing the ground game and grinding out the clock. A zero means there is no correlation between the data and that it's just a flat line and it's a scattered all over the place. There is no correlation and then you know this isn't really useful information. A correlation above zero means a positive correlation, which means that as this number goes up, so does the other number, so it goes in a line like that. Um, that's good. That means as this thing occurs, this other event occurs, and as this occurs, this other event occurs. Um, and that's the correlation that you're building, right? And again, it doesn't mean that when this happens, this has to happen. It just means as this is going up, this is moving up at the same rate, and that they are related to one another, but they do not cause a direct impact on one another. So what I went ahead and did was I went to hockeyreference.com and pulled down some statistics about different teams and then collected the information and threw it into the Google Sheet. Again, we have gone through on how to collect this information. It can be through a macro. It can be through the old copy and paste method. It doesn't matter as long as you get the information. The next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and scrub the data. Again, always scrub it, clean it, get rid of stuff that you don't need. So when we're going to go ahead and look at this information, right, we have things for the teams. Um, the average age of players, games played, wins, losses, overtime losses, points, points percentage, goals for, goals against, a lot of information that I've gone ahead and pulled down here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this information. So then we have shots on goal, and then I created the column of average shots on goal. This does not exist on the website uh, from where I pulled the data from. I'm sure it's there somewhere, but I didn't want to take the time to find it. So I just went ahead and said, let's take the shots on goal total uh, and go ahead and divide it by um, how many games they played. And then that gives us an average shots on goal per game. So using the average shots on goal, we know we're going to use this information. It's going to be important here coming up. I did not bother collecting the league averages because I can just use that in a formula. 
If you want to collect the information and then create a league averages uh, row, totally fine, doesn't matter. I just didn't feel the need to do it for this demo of creating a correlation. Real quick, I just went ahead and created two correlations here. We have the wins to average shots on goal. So what is the correlation between how many times a team wins versus the shots on goal? I typically would expect that the more shots on goal you have, the more wins you have. That kind of makes logical sense. The more often I'm shooting, the more often I have a chance of scoring. Therefore, I would expect a positive correlation above a zero. So for this first one, I went ahead and did the wins to the shots on goal. Um, and that is a positive correlation here. We have 0.65. Again, remember your range could be negative one, which is an absolute 100% opposite direction of things moving apart um, to a positive one, which is the things are exactly the same and they're moving the exact same direction to each other. You no, know, they could be moving this way, they could be moving this way, but they're stacked on top of one another and they're perfect. So a 0.65, that's a pretty good correlation. To get the correlation, you need the formula equals coral, which is for short for correlation. And then you're gonna choose the first set of data. So here I went ahead and chose the win column. And then you're gonna choose the second set of data that you wanna see if it's correlated. And then I took the average shots on goal, I believe for this one, right? Make sure I grab the right column, yep. So the average shots on goal. So based upon that, the correlation is 0.65. That's pretty good. So now I know this is probably some relevant data that I can use to figure out the games. Next, um, I did team points to the average shots on goal. Again, this is backwards looking data that you wanna use to predict the future. Team points to average shots on goal, we have 0.674. Um, again, very great correlation. That makes sense though, because the more times that you're shooting, the more often you are to win, the more times you win, the more points you get. You get two points for a win. Um, so the more likely that you win the game, the faster you're gonna rack up those game points. So this is the first step in finding data that you think is gonna be relevant for your model and just looking up what is correlated in a positive direction. If you find data that is correlated in a negative direction, that can be useful too. Don't just throw it away because you're like, oh, it's not a positive correlation that's totally fine because that's still a great indicator as long as the value is close to negative one because that means as one value goes up, the other one is likely to go down. Is that a true causation? Maybe not. But now you can start using that into your betting models to say as this value goes up, this value goes down, how do those interplay with other additional statistics? Again, this is a very basic intro to correlation and how you can quickly calculate that and see if you want to compare how does wins compare to 10 other data points, you can run correlations against each and then see, okay, what is the actual output of these and grab the ones that have the highest correlation because now you know these most likely are the ones impacting it. You want to find really well correlated points of data. You can't just use the basic information that you're going to find in the top level of stats. A great way to think about this is when I'm looking for data to support my narrative, I got to find stuff that the sports books may have overlooked or didn't take into account. That doesn't mean that you throw away anything that seems top level and things like that. You wanna pull those in still, but be prepared to add those into a more complicated betting model and just not correlation. So using this as your stepping stone to see what do I really wanna use as far as information to help guide the rest of my betting models, this is phase one. Uh, phase one is again, collect the stats, look for the correlation, and then begin prepping for your model. All right, and that is it for correlations. It's really not that complicated. Do the equals corel, and then the two columns of data you wanna analyze and see if there's a correlation. Remember, a negative correlation means that as one number goes in one direction, the other number is going in the opposite. Zero correlation means they're not related at all, so it's a straight line. And a positive correlation means as one number goes up, so does the other number. Remember, when you're trying to deal with correlations, you want to go ahead and build a narrative first and then have the data support the narrative. Go find data you think it might be relevant, then go ahead and run the correlations and see. As a positive or negative correlation forms, there may be a relationship there. Correlation is not causation. Remember that. Just because one thing has a relationship with another does not mean 
that when one thing moves, it's forcing the other one to move. It just means that the data looks like they're moving at the same time. That's very critical to this. If you like the content that you got today, go ahead and click the like button. That lets me know to keep putting out this kind of content and other things around data modeling, sports betting modeling, and things like that. If you want to keep up to date on all the videos that I post, things about what I'm wagering, planned wagering, models that I'm building, analysis of data, macros, web scrapers, things like that, go ahead and hit subscribe. That allows you to get notified as soon as I post the latest and greatest video. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, you like the video, you hate the video, you want to see me make things, um, you want to go ahead and ask me a question about the process, go ahead and drop the information into the comments down below and I'll try and get back to those as fast as I can. So until next time, happy wagering.